Assalamualaikum everyone. Uh, I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, they uh, that you have been enjoying the program thus far. Uh, my name is Bilal Bakay, and we are going to be shortly getting started uh, with the next uh, session, inshallah. Uh, so we have a great lineup of speakers, uh, alhamdulillah, as, as well. Um, I just wanted to make some quick announcements. Uh, one of the main goals for this conference, inshallah, is to uh, inspire you guys to join uh, ICNA uh, um, IGNA and uh, with, in, in your local communities. Uh, please, you know, look online, look to volunteer. You can go on www.icna.org slash volunteer. Or um, you can also participate by donating, as you can see uh, below, that we are in deep uh, need uh, for your financial contribution. Uh, typically, you know, the convention would be a great spo uh, uh, location where we would be able to do this. But unfortunately, due to COVID, um, the pandemic has uh, caused uh, a lot of our cash flow to be uh, to resend as well. So please uh, make sure, uh, if you are able to, to go on www.icna.org. Uh, and click donate. Um, we do have some uh, time for questions as well, inshallah. Um, so I, I would like to pose this question, um, and I think uh, it, it's kind of applicable to uh, all of our uh, three speakers, inshallah, uh, but we'll try to go in order of the, those who presented. Uh, one of the amazing abilities of the Prophet ﷺ was his abil uh, ability to carry everyone as an ummah, and as Imam Khalid mentioned, that even if with people with different uh, backgrounds, but how, how do we um, in America try to overcome the differences and really uh, move on, on in, in a, as a single front. Um, hi, I think you might be on mute. Yeah, you would think that after doing so many uh, webinars that I wouldn't try to talk with my mute. I do this every single time. But uh, I would respond to that by saying that the, um, the formula for bringing uh, diverse Muslims together is, in, in my humble opinion, is that of uh, having committed Muslims. Uh, because the commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu if we are committed to that, uh, then the considerations of the differences that we, that we have with one another will, will be over they would be overridden, overruled, or whatever the word would, would be here. So I, I think that uh, the more committed group of Muslims who are in alliance together, who are working together, uh, those issues of differences become so nominal, and just the work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overrides those, those other considerations, like it did during the day of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Sure. Uh, Dr. Shahid, would you like to add anything to that as well, or should we move on? We can move on to the next question. Okay. Uh, all right. Inshallah. Um, so, Dr. Shahid, I had specifically for you, you mentioned um, an ayah of Surah Al-Hujrat, um, uh, which talked about talking over the Prophet um, and I would just wanted you to finish the ayah because it, it has such a huge implication um, of what the, the result would be, right? And that your your deeds could be destroyed. Um, and so if you could elaborate on, on that. You know, knowingly or unknowingly, you know, if we really disrespect in, in any capacity the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us here that we should be very careful and watchful of our you know, actions, our attitude, our approach, our responses. So when dealing with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is not like dealing with anybody else in the world. You are dealing with a person that about whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَرَفَعَنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ that Allah is the one who has raised his zikr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is warning here. An tahbata amalukum wa antum la tashurun. If you will 
transgress, if you will cross your boundary, then this will delete, this will, you know, clean your slate of your book of Amal. So a lot of time I have seen the attitude here, especially these days, there is a, there is an effort going on uh, among Muslims. There are some scholars who really want to make this, uh, this as an issue. And their point is that Quran is enough. The messenger's duty was just to deliver Quran. And they basically are trying to undermine the value of Hadith, the value of uh, the personality of Prophet Muhammad in our Iman. So in this context, I want to be very, very careful when we deal with Prophet Sallallahu that we really don't want to get indulged in anything which can really put us in a very bad situation when we see Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So I, I really feel like that that's why it is very important for us. I said in the beginning of my talk that our faith, our Iman is based, the basic foundation is the respect and Iman and acknowledgement and understanding of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, one thing I want to add Bilal, to this, uh, this question specifically about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And many a time we also uh, see this, this kind of attitude where people are saying, well, well wait a second, but this is a Zaif Hadith. Well, you know, wait a second, stop, stop. Do not, if you don't know anything about it, maybe in a, maybe there, there are scholars sitting together discussing on a topic and they're discussing in, from an uh, ed, academic perspective, that's a different setting. But in, in the normal setting, when people are sitting and somebody presents an argument, well, this is a British Mahadeep. Now, don't start you know, negating that, even if you don't know. Uh, if you know, or unless you have very, very methodical, proper knowledge of the, of the, of the, the topic, I suggest you stop, maybe later on, go investigate, find out, and maybe share that. But do not start to, uh, you know, become a scholar and a, an expert at the time. What if what if the hadith is true? Maybe it's a very hadith, that's fine. But what if it's true? And, I mean, this is a, so, you know, talking over uh, and talking above the voice of Prophet Sallam, it's not just about in physical sense, but even of what he said and what he did. So we have to be extremely careful. Um, so we have three minutes left, uh, and I do have one uh, last question, uh, Brother Javed, for you as well. This was posted, actually. Um, it's, it's asking, how do we deal and talk to Muslims who claim that insulting the Prophet Sallam is a form of uh, freedom of speech? Uh, especially with respect to the freedom of speech, uh, so so they agree with it or disagree with it? Uh, so they're, they're asking how do they deal with Muslims who uh, claim that this is freedom of speech. Uh, okay, so, and I think uh, Dr. Jamal Badawi in his speech uh, presented, and he actually wrote an article on this uh, many years ago, and he talks about the freedom of speech and the freedom of uh, uh, expression. And uh, even today, he, he alluded to that uh, and, and kind of gave details of that. And I think people need to understand there are always taboo uh, topics. For example, the anti-Semitism perspective, the Holocaust perspective. There are several topics that are uh, either, either on a national level or an ethnic level. They are considered to be, uh, for example, for example, uh, you know, in, in, in the, uh, Imam Khalid is here. There are certain words from an African-American perspective that are taboo, that are completely unacceptable, right? But those are words, right? You can, you can argue the point, of the, well, those are just words. I just meant to say this word. Well, wait a second. Words have a history, has a meaning, and has an impact. Huh. And, and this is just across the board. So accepting, I mean, you know, how many people, people can say, well, I can curse this person or that person online or say this and that about him. But there are sensitivities that people don't cross. There's in every nation, in every culture, in every time, even today, in part of the part, different part of the world, these subjects are very real. So uh, 
you know, and again, th there are uh, there are norms within society. There are uh, forms of respect that are that are obligatory. So we are we are human beings. We are not animals, right? <laughs> Just if we are human beings, and there are some lines of civility that that need to be always minded. Yes, you can you can disagree about something, uh, you know, respectfully, but you know. Freedom of speech doesn't mean doesn't mean that you just go into the to the point where you just start to curse and there are certain norms that needs to be respected. So that's what I would say to these brothers, and I would ask them to learn more about it, read about these other instances where societies and ethnicities and you know nations respect certain characters, certain norms, certain behaviors, certain words. That's a very common notion. It's not something uh, unique. No, yeah, I think uh, you really nailed it uh, with the idea that there are certain limitations uh, in, in terms of even, for example, yelling fire in, in a packed um, room of people, you know, it has consequences. There are going, it's, it's dangerous to do such things. Um, so Jazakallah Khair, I would like to thank uh, each of our panelists and speakers uh, one last time uh, on behalf of the organization. Thank you guys uh, for sharing. Uh, gems with us and about the life of the prophets i mean this is just a small uh step in the right direction of learning about our beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam um so hopefully uh today you were motivated uh by a, a speech a lecture a quote a gem that will make your journey uh into to to learn about the the Prophet Sallallahu life uh, and start that journey inshallah um, and with that I would also like to thank the organizers who put this together um, it's amazing that uh, yeah, alhamdulillah even within a pandemic we are able to connect each other and convey the message uh, to the best of our ability and uh, as mentioned throughout the program today one of the main goals of this conference is to inspire attendees um, to, to, con to act to get up and volunteer uh, to do something uh, and, and inspired by the life of the Prophet Sallallahu whether it's uh, participating through um, ICNA or elsewhere within your local community, but at least become active. Um, and lastly, I would like to just request everyone that if you have not are not volunteering with ICNA, be sure to sign up. You can go to www.icna.org slash volunteer and you can sign up and become part of a local chapter. One of the greatest things about ICNA is their grassroots effort. And so their local chapters, local units uh, that you can engage with, inshallah. And lastly, uh, if you are able to uh, donate uh, with if not your time but financially make a monetary contribution please do so by visiting www.icna.org slash donate